Okay, <clears throat> today we're gonna talk about Nelson's heuristics of design. So N Nelson's heuristics of design, these are all but a classic. The Norman Nelson group created 10 rules that apply to all products that UX designers get their hands on. These are known to be quite tough to respect, especially all at once <clears throat> and the same product. With that said, these rules act as a standard when it comes to great usability, effective setting the, effectively setting the bar for all design. So let's go through them. One is the visibility of system status. What does that mean? Visibility of system status. We'll get through, we'll go through each one of these more in detail, but essentially letting you know what's going on. What is it loading? Is it is it is it giving us a, an indication of how much longer it's going to load? All of that. Um, <clears throat> match between system and the real world. User control and freedom, consistency and standards. Hold on a second, I need to switch my earbuds. Professor, your mic is being weird. I don't know if you're muted or if it's not connected again. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties with my earbuds. So I'm just gonna quickly reiterate because I'm not sure where it uh, blanked out. But basically these 10 um, rules that were created um, are known to be quite tough to respect, especially all at once, especially on the same product. So this come as a standard for great usability, effectively setting the bar for each design. So we're gonna go through all 10 of them. So let's go ahead and go through them. So one, visibility of system status. This is a way of saying that users need to know what's happening at all times. Since humans can't truly talk to machines, it's up to designers to indicate that commands have been registered, that something's loading or that some data is being retrieved. Absence of system status usually results in confused users pressing the same button over and over again. How many of us have had that experience when something doesn't tell us what's happening next or what we can expect when we're using a product or service? Right, how many of us can experience that? Anyone? Okay, so let's go on. Matching between systems and the real world. The UI design should use a language that users already know, using references to the real world. That's why toggle switches look like real physical switches and buttons look like real buttons you could press. Three is user control and freedom. People need to be in control of what happens in the product as well as to have freedom from their own mistakes. 
People often regret buttons clicked or texts sent, and it's up to designers to help users be free from the consequences of these mistakes. Things like undo buttons or edit come into play here. Consistency and standards. Try to push boundaries and innovate is great, but there's a right way to do it. And when it comes to UX design, it's important to remember that users spend a lot of their time using all sorts of digital products. These products have set their expectations and trying to go against these expectations can be disastrous. Users expect a hamburger icon to be a menu and instead of fighting this assumption, use it in your favor. Consistency and standards. Trying to push boundaries and innovate is great. Oh, sorry, I meant to show the hamburger menu. Apologize, I'm reading it again. Uh, error prevention. Just like you wanna help users recover from their mistakes, you also want to minimize the margin of error. This is all about testing the design and finding areas that are the most error prone and adjusting accordingly, rather than it being a slip due to inattention or a conscious mistake. If you want to have users simply enjoy the app and not make an active effort to not make mistakes. Recognition rather than recall, people have terrible long-term memory. It's a fact of life. And so it's important that you don't expect users to remember anything they've seen on the product interface. Any information that is important should be either shown to users or be easily retrieved. Flexibility and efficiency of use. New users are likely to spend time exploring the product and using the most obvious path to complete their tasks. With that said, you want to create shortcuts to add certain flexibility to the design for those who aren't novices. If people will be using the app repeatedly, you want it to be efficient. Aesthetics and minimalist design. This isn't quite the same as the popular design style of design, but rather a more functional standard for any screen. You absolutely don't want to include useless information or things that don't need to be in the interface. These extra elements can mess up the visibility of the screen and create cluttered look. At any point in time, include only the things that are necessary in the design. And help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. This heuristic basically concerns errors messages found in the product. The days where a simple try again showed up on the screen are long gone. Good UX design helps people understand what went wrong and points them to a way to recover. You want descriptive messages that give context to users. Help and documentation. Ideally, you want a product to be easily easy so that users don't need any help. However, for many products out there, that's just not feasible. You want to have documentation that it's easy to understand, easy to search for users to be able to see the actual step-by-step -step break, breakdown of any given task. And that's it. Those are the 10 um, rules that of good UX design.